And here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on Thursday night, the 27th of June, 2019. Hey, Grim, I did it again. Made it to the radio without any uh, little problems I kept finding happen over the last few months. That all stopped a couple weeks ago. So I'm back flying solo and doing the radio on an independent wavelength. Whoop, whoop. And I want to make sure I'm live before I say hey to the bots and bodies out there in the reallibertymedia.com chat. That's where, uh, that's where most of the information is centered, I suppose. In the chat room where you can get links and other valuable tips for your entertainment buck. Yeah, okay, so I'm here, I think I'm here, and we've got in the uh, in the hostage negotiation process, we've got Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, DC, Anti, Chalcedony, Graham Z, I Be Don C, Java Doctor 2, Ponder Gander, Trust Number 1, Vanna White, Vinny Real, Weather Dork, Woodman, Z Beth Z Phantom, Asmo Two, Cyborg Noodle, Me, Frumpy, Grommet, Jays Nines, Jays, Kiss, Kiss underscore, Mmm, Smataz, Van Meter, and What? And there, there's the bots and bodies to play with in the chat room tonight. For your typing extravaganza. And if you give me about 10 seconds, I think I got a cat trying to come in the house. I'll be one second. Well, I have had captive animals. I had to open the door. Thought I'd opened it before the show, but apparently not. So, tonight, I've been doing um, 20% off. Let me take a look at the last couple of things I did. Tonight, I wanted to do something about government. Because everybody loves government and uh, got those big democratic selection things going on right now. Everybody's all excited about the debates so they can hear their favorite moron get up there in front of a camera, lie like a freaking judge, and uh, expect to get hired to, a jo to do a job that never gets done. They call it politics. I don't know why. But anyhow, let me see what I've been doing on the 20% off program. For the last couple episodes. Should have done this before the show, but I didn't really think of it, so I figured I'd do it while I'm doing it. If I can do it. Let's see, we were doing a defining a state of reality is harder than it looks. Boy, is it. But uh, I was listening to Miss Mary this morning, this afternoon, I think, this afternoon. And uh, she was running on <clears throat> carbon-based life forms. And I really like that. I've been using that line for quite a while. Uh, that's what we are. Global you know, warming has convinced us of uh, other things. Hmm. That's why I'm so dead against everything we know is just turns out to be a bunch of shit. And that, I use that as an example. Global warming. Well, it's getting warmer. Yeah, here and there, but it's getting colder in other places, and this, that, and the other. And the whole thing was all, all about money anyway. Commerce, tax, revenue, funds. Let's make our living off the backs of the worker. And the, the beauty of this whole thing to me is that it's all done on credit. Every financial transaction that we make it's all done using fiat currency. And fiat currency is debt-based. 
For those of you out there in Radio Land that didn't know that, welcome to the show. <laughs> anyway. mm. Now, I found a little thing a couple of months ago, and it's old. It's from 18. 20 and 18. And what happened was the United States decided to make it impossible to fly domestically. And back in, in 20 and 18, nine states will require passports for domestic flights within the U.S. Now, why? I don't know. They're just squeezing the poor out so they can't use shit. Keep making a, a you know, a more this and more that and safer here and safer the, over there. And the next thing you know, the people that can afford to fly have their own planes. So everybody else gets grounded. Anyway, that's just a little something off the top of my head. I should have posted it, but I didn't feel like it. Now, what I got on my mind tonight. <laughs> because I don't usually, uh, I didn't usually do links. The links thing for me is new. Because everybody else is doing links. And I kept thinking, how the hell can I find a link that nobody else w has already covered 10 or 15 or 20 times. So, I dug into my bag of tricks. And I found a little link. Now, this is uh, mainstream shit. And I didn't read it. I just wanted to see what the mainstream would have to say to the public if they're investigating fractional reserve banking and what it is and how it works. Well, you'll never find out in the end is why we use it, <laughs> but eh, we'll save that. Maybe me and Vinny can do that on the dork table on Saturday. Why do we use fiat currency instead of 38s? To stay out of prison, Bosco. <laughs> anyway, so what I've got for you today is what is the fractional reserve banking system? And it's called a complete beginner's guide. <laughs> I doubt that, seriously, but uh, this was the very first thing that popped up, I think, and it comes from a block o -nomi. doesn't say who wrote it, ah, Brian Curran on August 2nd, 2018, and the story goes something like this, it's a little hard to read some of these things, they're, uh, they're in this new internet kind of type thing where this Headline for that and this bolding for this. Oh, come on, Hannah. My dog's, I'm getting messed up. My dog's messing with me. All right. From the beginning, the famous excerpt hidden inside the Bitcoin Genesis block was taken from the Times, a well-known British publication, and read. The Times, 3rd of January 2009, Chancellor on Brink of Second Bailout for Banks. The aftermath of the 2008 global financial crisis was in full swing, and the timing and context of the message were impeccable. The U.S. government has just bailed out the financial system to the tune of $700 billion. After the sub subprime mortgage crisis caused the housing bubble to collapse, leading to a global recession. Well, there's a lot more to that than what it just said in that little sentence and a half. But we'll continue with the story just the same. Because, like I said, what so far this has to do with fractional reserve banking is out of my area. I don't get it yet. But I'll continue with the link. While there was a litany of signals and causes for the collapse, including excessive risk-taking and impropriety by banks, the broader theme at work, with which similar events and recessions in recent history can largely be attributed to, is the framework that the modern financial system exists in, known as fractional reserve banking. Okay, now I get it. A system that Bitcoin represents the antithesis of, Antithesis, 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 and offers a unique and paradigm-shifting alternative to... Wow, boy, these people try to really use big words, don't they? Use a word that you use out loud about once every 12 years just to throw the reader off. 
Okay, where were we? History of fractional reserve banking. A common theme that consistently emerges when looking at the formation and modern structure of fractional reserve banking is debt. That being said, understanding how FRB came to be is necessary to understand its current structure and how cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are so unprecedented. FB, FRB is the current form of banking in most countries around the world. Despite being around for a relatively long time, the focus of FRB in this piece is precisely on the modern iteration of such a system where government monetary authorities and federal central banks monitor the financial system and regulate control of the currency supply established in 16 and 9 the Bank of Amsterdam was founded and is considered the precursor to modern central banks in existence today notably the Bank of Amsterdam played a vital role in the early emergence of paper money which took the form of a bank receipt issued by the bank for gold, silver, and other valuables that were deposited to the bank. At the, at the time, the primary source of value was gold and silver. However, it was increasingly difficult to exchange through trade as they are cumbersome, especially over longer distances. Hmm. See, so they're setting up they're setting up the stage so you can see the band come on. Just when you get to Trump, don't throw up. The banknotes became a standard minimum of exchange between people as they represented a deposit with a goldsmith or bank. Something interesting soon followed. Goldsmiths and banks realized that they could issue more deposit receipts. Banknotes than what they t actually had stored in their reserves. They also realized that people just did not redeem their receipts for deposit all at once, but rather at various times. More on this later. Eventually, rather than providing a safe haven for valuables, goldsmiths became businesses that were interest-paying and interest-earning. Thus, FRB came into existence. A critical question that you may have immediately and still has resounding consequences today is what happens if a bank does not have the necessary reserves to pay back the owners of deposit slips? The bank becomes insolvent in such case and goes bankrupt, causing creditors to lose their funds and severely harming the financial markets. Now, see, huh? Uh, and that, that again. If the currency is owned by the Federal Reserve Bank and they just kind of let us use it, then uh, where does all that come into play? You know, uh, hmm. if you can't pay something, then they charge you money for not being able to pay it. <laughs> it's oh, okay. If it goes insolvent, it can't. I uh, this I I'm so confused. My poor little mind is just running everywhere with this one. <clears throat> if this sounds familiar, it is because when this happens to several major banks at the same time, in what is known as a bank run, major financial crisis ensue, leading to government bailouts, the increased power of central banks, and social fallout. The Great Depression is attributed to bank runs and was so bad that global GDP fell by an estimated 15% at the time. Following the creation of paper money in the Bank of Amsterdam, the Swedish Riksbank was established in 1668 and is credited with being the world's first central bank. Soon more countries followed suit, setting up central banks with the power to set reserve requirements, issue money, and importantly, to centralize the storage of other commercial banks' value reserves. 
The purpose of the latter authority is to mitigate the potential crisis caused by bank runs with the central bank acting as a last resort lender to other banks. Wow, this does get complicated. I'm just reading it in a short, you know, uh, little link on the internet. This probably, if you've never heard this before, which I doubt anybody listening to this hasn't, but say you're the new guy and you've never heard of any of this. Do a little more reading. This link will more than likely just leave you confused at this time. But this is how the money system is truly operated and why? <laughs> For profit. Profit is our friend. Hold on. I got my dog bugging me. Come on, Hannibal. You've been, everything has been made for your liking. Don't, don't be such a dog. And I'm stalling, trying to load my pipe here before I get back to this epic story. Epic. We are talking fractional reserve banking at its lowest level. The word. Uh, over time, the realization that bank runs are an, an, an inherent component of the FRB has led to more centralization and authority of central banks in the global financial system. As a modern example, the U.S. Federal Reserve is the central banking system of the U.S., and its powers have been extended significantly since events such as the Great Depression and more recently, the 2008 global financial crisis. The Federal Reserve was established on December the 23rd, 1913. Through the Federal Reserve Act, its primary objectives, as outlined by Congress, are to maximize employment, failed, stabilize prices, failed, Moderate long-term interest rates. Failed. Uh, the phrase interest rates is essential here as it will help us to understand later how money is created and how the concept of debt is central to the FRB system. It is important to note that the Federal Reserve contains components of both a private and public institution. It regulates and oversees private commercial banks and unusually does not print its own currency. Instead, this is performed by the U.S. Department of Treasury. Defi despite mainstream familiarity and acknowledgement of the necessity of the Federal Reserve's role in maintaining a stable economy, that has not always been the case. The first bank of the United States and the second bank of the United States were the first, were the two first central banks in the United States, established in 1791 and 1816, respectively, due to overprinting the paper issuance of the first bank, called Continentals, devalued so quickly that Cong Congress banned the practice of issuing paper money in a draft of the Constitution in 1787. Congress eventually refused to renew the charter of the first bank in 1811 and the second bank established in 1816 also failed to receive a charter renewal from the US Congress in 1836 under then President Andrew on the $20 bill Jackson. Well, maybe not anymore, but he, he was when I was there. Jackson is famously quoted as saying, referring to central banks, the bold effort the present bank had made to control the government are but premonitions of the fate that await the American people should they be looted, deluded into a perpetuation of this institution or the establishment of another like it. And here we sit. And, oh, man, see, this is why I do the radio. <laughs> and this is why I think so, you know, oddly compared to Johnny voter for Trump or Obama or Hill Dog or whatever idiot Bush, whoever your moron is out there in the public eye. Wow. I would have uh, 
I, I would have a hard time following people like that anywhere. But enjoy the ride. Now, back to this epic tale of finance, specifically referring to the second bank of the United States. Independently of its misdeeds, the mere power, the bare existence of such power, is a thing irre irreconcilable with the nature and spirit of our institutions. Well, they don't want to come right out and say Jewry is not a way to be, but that's what that meant to me. Take your interest rates and go back to Israel, Jew guy. <laughs> but back then Israel hadn't started yet. <laughs> they were working on it. Back to the story. Jackson was also the only president to pay off the entire U.S. government debt. But despite his efforts, a third central bank, the Federal Reserve, was eventually established in 1913. Interestingly, the U.S. experienced what was known as the free banking era from 1837 to 1862, where there was no formal central banking system and only state chartered banks existed. How the fractional reserve banking system works and the creation of money. Wow. Give me a second here. I think that is, that one requires a sip of tea. Through the lens of cryptocurrencies and how they represent an alternative to the modern fractional reserve banking system. It is best to understand the intricacies of the flow of money in the FRB model, specifically the creation of money, its propagation into circulation, and the resulting effects. We will use the U.S. financial system as the example. And then follow the money. Ah, the story is good. <clears throat> Hold on, let me get another tub. A little lighter this time. Brett. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> well, anyway. Ah, breathe. Brett. <laughs> Fra <laughs> Hold on a second. Fractional reserve banking is a system where only a fraction... <laughs> fractional of FRB of bank deposits are actually backed by cash and are actually available for withdrawal. The primary purpose of this is to free up capital that can be loaned to other parties as a way to expand the economy. By law, banks are required to reserve a predefined amount of cash deposited by depositors on hand available for withdrawal. Most banks are required to reserve about 10% of withdrawals. So for a $100 deposit, they are legally required to maintain $10 of the deposit as a reserve. The reserve requirement is set by the Federal Reserve, and increasing the requirements removes money from the economy while decreasing the requirement adds money. Give me a second to finish this tea. Holy Moses, the pipe load was good tonight. Anyway, it will come as a surprise to many people that when you actually deposit money into a bank account, it ceases to be your property. Rather, it becomes the property of the bank who issues the depositor an asset known as a deposit account. This is a liability on the balance sheet of the bank, and they are legally responsible for paying it to you upon request, as long as they have the requ their requisite funds to cover it. 
think bank run. <laughs> Where the system gets interesting is with what is known as the multiplier effect. Primarily, the flow of money proceeds as follows. Alice goes to a major commercial bank and deposits $1 billion into her bank account. The bank is legally required to reserve 10% of her deposit. So they reserve $100 million as cash on hand available for withdrawals. The bank now has $900 million to issue out in loans. Bob goes to the same bank and wants to take out a loan for $900 million. What a coincidence. The bank agrees and gives Bob $900 million. Each bank is legally authorized to issue credit up to a specified multiple of its reserves, typically 9 to 10 times larger. Due to this, reserves available to satisfy payments of deposit liabilities are less than the total amount which the bank is obligated to pay in satisfaction of demand deposits. So, the money that Bob's receive that Bob's Bob receives is actually an additional 900 million on top of the original 1 billion deposit by Alice. Bob takes his 900 million to another bank and deposits. The total amount of money from Alice's 1 billion is now 1.9 billion. The process repeats for each deposit and issuance of credit and is known as the multiplier effect. Now, the overall FRB system is much more nuanced and complex than the example above, but this is the core of it and some larger perspectives need to be analyzed. Most obviously, the question is, how is an additional $900 million created? Simply put, debt. Since the financial world today exists almost entirely through digital mediums, Alice is not actually handing the bank one billion dollars in cash and the bank is not actually counting the money on a handwritten ledger instead it is stored on a centralized digital ledger of the bank Ooh, juicy juicy the bank issues Bob a 900 million dollar credit digitally so while the original bank is liable for Alice's one billion the second bank, where Bob deposited his $900 million, is liable for that money. Yes, the money was created out of nothing. This is what drives inflation, interest rates, and devaluation of currencies. But more on that in a little. <laughs> then it's got this like little... Uh, hmm. Oh, the basic fractional reserve banking cycle. It's got little pictures and words to explain all that so you, for the hearing impaired. And Because uh, I put the link on the reallibertymedia.com chat because I think there's a few people listening today from RLM. I'm not sure. I, don't, I can't read the chat and read the link at the same time. So I'm going to take a link break and go over and see what's going on. Because most of these folks here on the Real Liberty Media uh, the ones in the chat room, they they know the stuff inside out. So after you know, after a while, it it gets a little repetitious. But have to remember that you know that's what uh, that's what doing what we're doing is all about is the repetition and the keeping the same story, just like the liars did to us about the shit they lied to us about. They never broke. They said 9-11 was done by the hijackers. They still say 9-11 was done by the hijackers. You can find 50 ways to show them how, no, that did not happen. But the other person, 
depending on their indoctrination, what they saw, what they heard, what they read, they'll back up that hijacker story. They'll go to war in foreign lands over it to this day because they don't understand the basics of how money operates. And once you have the money figured out, the rest of it just, I guess it falls into place. You know, the, the, the tell of the ignorant man. And I'm, how I mean ignorant is not being where, where this anarchy thing took the rest of us. The ones that know, like Mary, we agree about certain things that I think we consider it knowledge because it's true. It's proven itself. You got a world full of disaster to look around and judge and prove that what we're saying is true. But you have this other world, this physical world that you keep working and you keep, you know, signing your name and you keep doing the little banking things and all the crap keeps happening. So it keeps the illusion of the banking alive because fear. People are terrified. Hey, Vinny, I see you. Uh, you're a funny guy. You don't see me. I'm not on camera. Hmm. Yeah, Grimner's listening on his other machine. He's got to re reboot this one. Yeah, Mr. Reboot. Hmm. Let's see. Ah, uh, Grimner's quoting the old Pink Floyd. And you know that. Um, let's see. Breaks out in a bass riff. Wow, Donna's joining him. <laughs> the... These wacky people on The Real Liberty, they have such fun when they chat with each other. Sometimes you just got to laugh. Anyway, I just wanted to take a break and check out who is still hanging around in the uh, RLM chat room. Gather my lungs. Boy, I hit that pipe a little bit too hard trying to do my story on the FRB. But here, oh, come on, Anna, I don't need backup. Here we go. The process of credit issuance and deposits can repeat over and over again, originating from Alice's initial $1 billion deposit. This is the multiplier effect and in simple estimate for the potential impact of FRB on the money supply from a deposit instance is roughly achieved by multiplying deposit the deposit blah, 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 by 10. So, in the case of Alice, her 1 billion deposit can potentially create 10 billion of new US dollars into the financial system. Again, this is not always the case, and there is much more. There is much, hmm, I should say, there are. Uh, it says there is much more, more nuance to it. I, the way the guy uses the word is just weird. But still, that is the general concept. Yeah, what they're saying is uh, from just multiply the deposit times 10. Now, not only is the deposit created out of nothing. There's no gold backing it. It's at that point in time, it's numbers on a computer screen. Maybe they'll get a fancy piece of paper and they'll write those numbers on your fancy piece of paper and then somebody will sign it. But that's not money either. <laughs> but we've been trained like good little sheep to buy at the bank and do what the suit tells us. And now there's people that are stepping up. You know, They're not so pleased with this shit anymore. There's not many of us, I gotta admit that. And there's a lot of people just running around being stupid about nothing. You know, your rioters, your demonstrators. Oh, please, Mr. Government, take your boot off of my throat. I can't breathe. Uh, hmm. Let me explain something to you, Mr. Protester. If the government has its boot on your throat and you're begging that boot to go away, it ain't going anywhere. That's the whole point of begging. That's what, you know, when when me and Cirque got married, we we're begging the system to let us do this thing so we could get our strawmen together and join forces and be one against the world and all that shit. And I think uh, 
personally, some people take the, the legalities and the statism and the the uh, the system, you know, the, this crap we live in that, I don't know. If, if it's overcrowded, it's a big mess. And if it's not overcrowded, then everything works pretty much okay. Whatever okay is. And then underneath all of the so society shit, that's where you got this fractional reserve banking. It's like cancer, you know. There's a cure for it, but nobody's going to freaking tell you what it is. So in the meantime, I'll get back to explaining what the internet world says about fractional reserve banking for you. Now there's a the next thing here is this uh, inflation and debt uh, over a long, the long term. The collateral effects of FRB are glaringly obvious. I don't even need to explain the graphic below or reiterate past catastrophic financial crises for you to realize this. And it's just a graph that shows you how the dollar was deflated. And see if it doesn't if it doesn't make sense to you on just a common sense level in the beginning, and you have to really struggle to understand this. Hmm. I don't think you'd be listening to this show right about now. I think the people that hung in here for this for this far, they got a complete, you know, maybe not a complete understanding, but the basics of how this works and why it's not ever going to succeed. So, back to my epic story. The common perception of FRB is that it ordinarily functions smoothly and that financial meltdowns are black swan events. Relatively few depositors demand payment at any given time. So bank runs and financial crises are few and far between. From many perspectives, these may seem as inevitable hurdles to maintaining a stable financial system. But these perspectives are inherently flawed because they do not take into account the long-term social and political ramifications of such massive events. I say, I'm on to something with this stay small shit. And then Circ works for this damn insurance company. And they're pretty big. It's a pretty good sized company. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, uh, to not be honest about that and not be rude at the same time is what I'm getting at. Because I, I don't, what Cirque does for a job is, that that's different. She's not in the finance end of it. But the core of this job of hers is finance. But I know something about finance that most other people may not even think of. And that is such. Just because you're in the finance business does not mean you do a finance job. You might do something that supports it. Uh, maybe something in IT or the creative department or sales or somewhere else. But the people that actually handle handle the money. <laughs> Nobody. Computer screens, glitches and glaps and programming and input and all this technical shit that we've all had thrown in our face in the last 20 years. This didn't exist when I was a kid. Hey, what? Computer? What? What you talking about? But, you know what did exist? Fractional reserve banking. See? So once upon a time, people out there in radio land, the politicians and the bankers had to do everything with pen and ink. Now they got video equipment, phones, <laughs> editing, <laughs> oh, power outages. Um... Hold on, let me cough up. Oh. Little bit heavy on the weed tonight. Sorry, folks. i uh, trying to remember I've got that uh, annoying mute button, but it clicks when I use it. I tried to use it when Vinny was talking, and I still heard myself clicking, so it defeated the purpose of what I was trying to accomplish. Hmm. I mentioned the term debt several times earlier and now is an excellent time to bring it back up and really analyze it the u.s money supply and overall debt held by the public 
have been increasingly consistently uh, over the last twin, uh, the last century. And I lost my whole line just vanished. And are eerily correlated together in their trend upwards. This is because new money injected into the system of the FRB is many times in the form of debt. Deposit slash credit issuance cycle. Of course, it'd be in, you're always in debt because there's a, a there's a fee attached to the freaking money. So there's a debt. You get your money, but it's already got a debt attached to it. And the way they use that is when you spend it. It's very complicated in, uh, in print how they do this. But basically what they do is they say they, you, you give them 80, 90 percent of your dollar up front is belongs back to them before you ever buy anything. And they do that with taxes and charges and fees and this. They've got a list of these just illegal freaking activities that, well, yeah, you're doing banking. You know, these things aren't illegal anymore, so we're going to do them. And as you, as you find out in the long run, well, maybe they're not illegal. Maybe they're immoral or they're unethical. And in some some um, political uh, opinions over the last couple hundred years, some politicians weren't too crazy about all this Federal Reserve banking. But they learned to love it. <laughs> Wonder how that happens. Anyway, where was I? Hmm. The inherent cost of this inflation. The steady devaluation of the U.S. dollar due to an increase in the money supply. Not correlated with any increase in goods and services, but rather with debt. With more money in supply and the inherent value of that money coming from nowhere, debt. The purchasing power of the dollar is diluted, as demonstrated in the graphic above. See, if you got the link, then you can see the graph. I'll post that. If you do catch the show off the RLM, I post the links in the... Uh, in, in the thing, the blog thing. To, so if you want to see what, what it was. Because sometimes I interrupt and I read around stuff. You might want to read this yourself to get a, a better grip on what it's actually saying. Because I'm just, I'm representing something and, and I'm not too crazy about the internet. As far as always getting the truth, the first thing you pull up, 90% of the time it's bullshit. So far, this link here I found was very informative, and uh, I understand what they're talking about. So if you're listening today, I hope you get it too. And if you don't, check the freaking link out. Talk to some people. This stuff is huge, and it's important. And there's probably nothing we can do about it. But I think knowing it puts you in a, in a place in... in, in in life that's just better than being ignorant of it. So, back to my epic tale. The current U.S. debt stands at over just $22 trillion. This debt has undoubtedly been used for funding companies, generating innovation, and in generally advancing the U.S. economy. It has also led to defaults on loans, wealth inequality, and an increasing misperception of what money and value are. See, that's what I have the hardest time defining myself from, you know, my simpleton guy look uh, point of reference, you know, the way I see this shit. Now, these people are just saying it more clearly, but it's just the same point. You're doing it wrong. What, whatever this is, it's, it's not designed to work. It is designed to do what it does. But the people that represent it don't tell you the truth. They just fucking lie with every breath they got. Keep it up because they're living in you know the lives of millionaires. They don't care what happens to us. We're, we're incidental. And settling for being incidental, hmm. I evaluate that to uh, things like voting and protesting. Uh, now, 
I've, I've done all my begging. I'm finished with all that horse shit. And life is comfortable. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, I don't see a... Oh, we had some neighbors fuck off here in the neighborhood. And they let their house go. And they got some... They got some vermins track, you know, tracking around in their yards. The, the two of the neighbors decided to team up against them, and one of them turned them in for one thing, and the other one turned them in for something com- completely different. And between the two of them, the house got empty. The cleaned them out, cleaned up the property, and whatever vermin or whatever they had cooking in their house is being dealt with. And that's how this works here. And I've been here for four and a half years. I'm telling you, if I had done something, these people would probably come to me like they went to these kids, told them, but they didn't want to listen. (laughs) So when you won't be reasonable and, you know, do what the people in the neighborhood want you to do, then they call the authority in. And I think that's the, uh, the difference between how things work here and how they work where I'm from is I never saw a big, uh, police thing i never it was so quiet it was done during the day when i'm home sitting right here in the living room and nothing out of the normal happened but yet these people were asked to move their self and their belongings out there you go so hmm, i don't know if that's mob rule or if that's just People tolerating something as long as they could before it finally hit their breaking point, like the like the the, uh, the banning we had on the you know on the RLM that caused Vinny to have a stroke. You know, uh, some people don't understand that just because you have a right to do something doesn't mean you have a right to do it. I mean, you have a right to it, sure, 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 and but you don't. It's, it's an illusion because there's always somebody that's out there that's going to just say, no, enough is enough. I've been putting up with this shit for so long, and you're not changing it. It's still the same as it's always been. You got to go. Why is Vinny has the hardest fucking time with that? Because he doesn't seem to understand that to me. I mean, this is my per- personal look on this situation is – uh I think some of us try to get through life defining it in layers of intelligence and uh, decorum, you know, uh, personal taste, uh, courtesy, lots of lots of things similar like that. And you've got your little ideas about how people behave or how they should or how they shouldn't. And then you get a wingnut like me, maybe. And uh, I constantly have something nasty to say to one particular person. Not everybody, mind you, but one. And I'm sure that that gets on some people's nerves. But you know what? That one person gets on my nerves. So I don't understand what Vinny doesn't understand. It's very simple. It's why it's okay for me and him to do that, but it wasn't okay for somebody else. And the answer that Vinny doesn't grasp, that I can see but don't necessarily agree with, is, well, you were told, you know, you were asked nicely or whatever. You were told not to do something. And in society, that's all it takes. When somebody complains to you personally and says, hey, you're overdoing this. You know, you want to back off a little bit. And you tell them to fuck off. You'll do what you want. That's where me and my brother were. Uh, well, there comes a time where you have to say, well, get a hold of me when you grow up and let it go. And I see that thing with Chloe in that light, but Vinny sees it more in the freedom of uh, freedom of speech. If you don't like what I say, well, you know, don't be a pussy. Just fucking ignore it, because I have people say horrible shit to me all the time. And I don't usually say nothing, except when it's Hansel. Hansel I'll play with. Mm. But Hansel holds a special place in that area of my typing world because he's so negative. Everybody else, everybody has a bad freaking day. Fuck, I've had bad weeks and was not the friendliest guy in the room to talk to. So I understand that. What I don't understand is the, uh, the, the, uh, being, uh, 
aggressive towards people politically or you know whatever your stand is I, I don't give a shit if you're a Trump supporter or a Hill Dog supporter whatever Biden it's all the same shit and I've said it and I've said it and I've said it and I've typed it and I've typed it and I've typed it but the funny part about it is when people are actually wrong about something they tend to overlook what you write about they only they only repeat their own version of your words so your original words get buried but I mean there's so many people on the site that are a lie you know they're uh, wise to that shit so you can't pull it off it doesn't matter but it's the insult of him being so stupid to keep trying it over and over like it's gonna work this time while E. Coyote and the Roadrunner were not a cartoon, people, it's real. I'm telling you, I'm living it. And with that, I'll get back <clears throat> to my epic tale of finance. This is called Taking a Step Back. Proponents of the central banking system, and particularly FRB, will defend the format which money is created in by pointing to the economic growth that the fight that the system facilitates and to a certain extent they are absolutely right conversely critics of the system will simply ask at what cost is this being achieved these are important questions with immense gravity that are highly relevant to everything from social dynamics to our conception of money itself Oh, no, wait, that was, oh, <laughs> ah, young Frankenstein. Perhaps if the U.S. had not instituted this system in the format that it did, when it did, it would not be the economic superpower that it is today. Although the FRB model has definitely been questioned throughout the years, there has not existed a suitable alternative to money that can be uh, reliably exchanged over digital mediums without centralized institutions until now. Aha, here comes everything. This is the big thing that, uh, wow, yeah, uh, yesterday, we get a guy that comes in the RLM, gets a little juiced up and likes to rant. And I think it was yesterday, uh, Woodman and Rome's were they were basking in their freaking success their Bitcoin hit like 11 grand and it took a shit it was at 19 and I think it went all the way down to what three thirty five hundred it was it was sucking oil down there with the freaking parasites and all of a sudden hmm, we have a selection coming up one more time. This fiat currency fucking game needs to be, you know, drugged down the road at least till another selection. What are these people going to do? They want to avoid a bank run. So, isn't that nice that Bitcoin's successful all of a sudden again? Hmm. Wasn't it the last time it was successful was right about the hmm, selection time? I think it was just before, just after old. Trump will stiltskin took seat. Well, I don't know all the details about all that, but I do notice these little like coincidences that other people don't think are coincidental. Back to the story. Perhaps if the U.S. had not... Wait a minute, I read that already. Hmm. Bitcoin represents an entirely new paradigm in the financial system. For the first time, people have the option of a viable alternative to Federal Reserve Bank, uh, bank yeah, uh, fractional reserve banking, and current value exchange models. Bitcoin does not have inflation, and its value is tied directly to its mining process that is derived from electricity and work. Conclusion The fractional reserve banking system is much more complicated than outlined in this article. But its core functionality remains the same. Eventually, history shows that people start questioning historical dynamics in hopes of finding better models, whether they be political, social, or, in this case, financial. 
Fractional reserve banking has been the model of centralized banking since goldsmiths decided to monetize their bullion reserves up until the modern day. Whether or not Bitcoin offers a sustainable solution to the problems created by FRB is yet to be seen, but at least it provides a viable alternative for those seeking one. And at the very least, Satoshi deserves a little credit for his timing. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people, to whom it properly belongs. Thomas Jefferson in the debate over the recharter of the bank bill 18 zero and nine wow that was a lengthy little thing man that took me like forever to read it i was getting it all dry in the throat and shit too anyway uh let's go to the chat and see what's going on i'll ramble about something fun hmm? 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 Hmm. yeah grimner says flash is it it is more not it is it is more of a fictional reserve than a fractional reserve. Well, yeah, to the trained eye, somebody that knows what the hell we're talking about here. Can you imagine, uh, I don't know, how would you put it? Being a normal, average Joe out there in the world with never heard of this. That's what this is all about. These topics that we talk about all the time you know that we're bored of because we've been doing it forever blah 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 this stuff is news to other people you know and uh unlike news reporters you know that just say what they're told to say they, they don't care this this doing the radio thing alone and you know, doing it with your buddies and whatnot, this brings out a little bit more truth than you're ever going to get off a TV show. You know? This is just somebody that knows what the fuck is going on to a degree. And if you don't know this, well, let me tell you about it. That That's what we do on the radio. Um, and it turns out I'm doing pretty good on BitChute, considering that I don't advertise on uh, like everybody else. I do shows that in the middle of the freaking night when everybody else is asleep. And the show that I do uh, when everybody's asleep is getting more traffic than the shoes, the shows that I do when everybody's awake. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. How, to, how do you explain something like that? You know, I don't know. But it's amusing as shit to... Uh, because I think I've mentioned it. Grim, Grim was kind of amused that I was going to do a show and nobody was going to be around to hear it. But, you know, like they say, if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody around, does it make a sound? And I would venture to guess that the rabbit shitting down on the floor probably hears it coming. But that's just me. What would I know? Mm. So... What have we got going on? We don't have nothing at all to report from Freddy Town. Outside of going to the grocery and uh, seeing the wife a little bit, been very uneventful. Ah, she's got a couple of weeks of vacation coming up in the summertime. I forgot if it was two or three. She told me earlier. She told me or she called me earlier, and I. Uh, it was a while ago, and I can't really remember what she said. I should have wrote it down. <laughs> But I, for, I forget to write shit down, so I forget to remember it. Anyway, I'm looking for another epic freaking saga to raise your mental IQ a lot. Oh, yeah, Woody, you're online tonight. Hey, Woody's in the uh, RLM chat with uh, Grimnir. And uh, Woody's one of the people that got into Bitcoin. He's been following it very closely for a while that I've noticed. And, uh, oh, what I was saying is the other morning, Woody and Rums are just, you know, they're, they're, they won. They got something. They, they finally fucking ha had a good day on their freaking Bitcoin. And we have this naysayer that, you know, shooting them down. Well, it's wait till the power goes out. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? Let me, let me tell you something. 
if and when the power goes out. It goes out for everybody equally, or it doesn't go out at all. <laughs> See? And beside that, you got this thing. Remember the, uh, what was that? The um, Arab summer. I think it was Saudi Arabia shut down their internet. Well, there were hackers in Saudi Arabia or whatever country it was. It was a Eastern, Middle Eastern country. I probably got the wrong freaking country like usual. Somebody can correct me if they know it on, on the reallibertymedia.com chat. But I'm going to go with Saudi Arabia. And well, anyway, what happened was uh, they took down the internet. And the hackers put it back up using modems and shit. Because these people that, <laughs> the underestimated, you know, the poor fucker that doesn't know his ass from, from his elbow, that wastes all his time playing all those dumb games, videos, and all this shit. Well, these people are learning how to code and they're learning how to do important shit. There's a lot of guys and gals out there with in, uh, interests in uh, electrical and assembling things and how to make something work when there's, hey, we can't do this. Oh, yeah, hold my beer, watch this. Those kind of people. And they managed to get the, uh, through the Arab Spring, they managed to get the uh, internet up using modems and shit and second-rate crap and get some kind of a internet going. So, hmm, government, power companies and all that shit, if, if they go, see, if this, the power goes for us, it goes for them too. It's not a one-sided thing. They can't survive without it. They cannot control us anymore. Without this damn internet. The internet is the only thing that's making it possible. Now, it never was this big. It never was so easy. We used to have to use telephones at phone booths, write notes. We remember it had a messenger, like a Senate page, baby, except without all the, you know, getting re raped in the ass and shit. But, uh, you know, you, here, Senate page, take this note to Senator so and so over there and You'll, you'll learn to love it. Trust me. Uh, anyway. Yeah, what's Grimner going on about now? Yeah, just try and use your fiat debt notes when the power goes out. Makes no sense to diss Bitcoin over that eventuality. Exactly. Because it doesn't matter. If the fucking power goes out and you're on currency, <laughs> you ain't spending it nowhere. How? No electricity. There's no cash register. No cash register. No sale. What are people going to do? They're going to have to write shit down the way they did a long time ago. So what have they done? They've not taught kids how to write and do math by uh, doing it by hand. So they got to push a button on a computer or they don't know what your damn total is. They can't do it in their head. Now, I can't say that about Denmark, but I can say that about where I'm from. You know, where, will that be with or without cheese? Uh, yeah, both. With and without, fucker. Why don't you just enjoy yourself? But, uh, hmm. I've had a lot of hard times talking about this with people, Graham, and you seem to fall right into it with me. One, one hand washes the other. You know, without us, there is no rich, and the rich know it, but the poor don't. The poor are so conditioned with society and <laughs> a lot of crap. I mean, look at this. All the attention that shit the debates got last night. Democratic debates. There ain't a Democrat that's going to freaking run that's going to win. The Electoral College is not going to be taken apart and replaced before the next election. Trump is your boy. Don't worry about it. Besides, when you're sitting on freaking uh, Iran, North Korea, Venezuela, and Syria, and you're Israel's bitch, who wants your job anyway, really? You think these other people really want to be the president? I don't. They don't act like they want to be the president. What I did notice about Trump, Trump didn't act like he cared about being president. He didn't give a flying wazoo if you voted for him or you didn't vote for him. He didn't seem to care. So it didn't strike me as all that odd that he was the next sitting POTUS. It'll strike me as odd if he's not the next sitting POTUS. Because I think his v, they got plans for his vice president in the second term. 
Not the first term. Oh, no, no, no. No, they're going to they're gonna fuck up like they did with Kennedy again. They're going to think this one through. And they're going to put Trump in second term. And then he's going to have a horrible French fry uh, incident and probably choke to death or slip and fall and, you know, break his ego in the in the shower and not be able to speak anymore. So something's coming. Anyway, I'm just having fun with political crap. I guess, wait, looking for something else. Ah, we're going to do, how about big government and big tech are pri partnering to track us everywhere. Hey, this might be fun. Let's hope, because I don't read these things before I read them on the radio. I read the headlines and hope for the best. And if I don't get the, what I'm looking for, I just quit reading a damn thing. If you've never heard the show before, I just quit reading it and go on to something else. <laughs> but I will post the link into the notes of the podcast in case you're curious and you want to see what didn't interest me that might interest you because, hey, that's how life is. But right now, big government is in my face. Oh, and they got their sitting government here finally. They settled a couple of days ago. Cirque told me and said, uh, <laughs> there is a majority of young women in the Danish parliament, people. So, their big problem is smoking. Yeah, there you go. See, these the people that we live amongst here are so worldly innocent to the... <laughs> what's normal to us makes them makes their eyes bug out of their head. They think it's all on TV. It's not real. I had to explain a few things to Cirque when we first joined forces, you know, became a partnership. She had a lot of misconceptions about uh, America. She thought all that stuff that they were showing was staged, all of it. No, no, no. The big stuff's staged. The Walmart stuff. No, that's not staged. That's encouraged. She was like, wait a minute, that's real? People really do that? you got to be kidding me. I thought it was just a joke. Here we are. So, George Orwell was a brilliant individual, a man of incredible insight and foresight. <laughs> wow, well, be careful where you put your foresight. Okay, I posted that in the thing. There we go. In his unfathomably predictive novel, not novel, 19 and 84, Orwell warns of Big Brother. Ostensibly the leader of Oceania, a totalitarian state wherein the ruling party, Ingzak, wields total power for its own sake over the inhabitants, just like it is now. In the society that Orwell describes, every citizen is under constant surveillance by the authorities, mainly by telescreens. The people are constantly reminded of this by the slogan, Big Brother is watching you. A maxim that is ubiquitously on display. In modern culture, the term Big Brother is has entered the lexicon as a Hannah singing. Hannah, come on, you crazy dog. Ah, as a synonym for abuse of government power, particularly in respect to civil liberties, often specifically related to mass surveillance. Oh, yeah, and to the people out there that are still clinging on to your constitution, I would like you to check back to 2001, about November, when uh, I think it was the Senate that voted on the uh, Patriot Act. And in that Patriot Act, one of the little things about the Patriot Act that we weren't really clear about was no more Constitution, <laughs> no rights, no liberties, no pursuit of fucking happiness, just up against the wall, bend over, and shut up. And that's where we're at. And there's still, to this moment, people praising this totalitarian fucking power that's sucking us up like a fucking biscuit and gravy. Anyway, 
As, as brilliant as Orwell was, something continuously struck me as incorrect as I read 1984. Orwell's government was extraordinarily competent in its totalitarian imposition of technological power. In reality, no government in the history of man has ever been even remotely close to that competent. For Orwell's Big Brother dystopia to become reality, big government would need private sector help. Enter private sector big tech. And there's a little thing on there, a little picture. Uh, <sighs> big tech has developed, delivered much of the technology Orwell envisioned as but one of many example Orwell's telescreens. Yeah, now you got cell phones. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. Devices that operate as television, security cameras, and microphones. Telescreens used by the ruling party in the totalitarian functional state of Oceania to keep its subjects under constant surveillance thus eliminating the chance of secret conspiracies against Oceania. <laughs> We're already all the way there via big tech. Holy shit, there's a statement to make. How Google and Amazon are spying on you. And it says Amazon too, Grimner, so don't get your knickers all in a twist. I didn't write it. But I know you like Amazon. These people don't seem to. The study found that digital assistants, Google Home and Amazon Echo, can be awake even when users think they aren't listening. The devices listen all the time. They're, they are turned on. And Amazon has envisioned Alexa using that information to build profiles on anyone in the room. Amazon filed a patent application for an algorithm that would let future versions of the device in identify statements of interest, such as, I love skiing, enabling the speaker to be monitored based on their interest and targeted for related advertising. Wow. Now, we already know all that, but okay. A Google patent of application describes using a future release of it I think it's smart home system to monitor and control everything from screen time and hygiene habits to meal and travel schedules and other <laughs> activities yeah like your sex bot that you keep in the closet there Wow, well, we see it don't worry about it we ain't gonna tell anyone it's all our secret there's more of this I'm only gonna read the black that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of read-ish. Ah, that'll give us... Uh, that'll make this thing even more fun. Well, yeah, it's got a lot of blah, 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 blah. Uh, it says, ah, this is all insanely creepy. Big tech is insanely big. And it, yeah, named about six things they do. Microsoft, market cap, $1.1 trillion. Amazon market cap 942 billion Google market cap 775 billion Facebook market cap 550 billion These four spying companies are currently worth a combined 3.7 trillion dollars Our nation's entire economy is 19.9 trillion dollars which means these four companies all by themselves are worth 19% of the United States. But it's big tech doing the spying, not big government. Anyone who looks at big tech's all-encompassing spying ability and thinks big government is capable of doing anything remotely similar hasn't paid attention to the past 10,000 years of human history. The only way big government can impose a big brother is to partner with big tech. Da -da. Wow. See, you guys keep trying to, hey, you need to be out there on uh, Twitter and you need to be out there on Facebook. And no, I'll settle for being s just really, really small on BitChute. Thank you very much. 
I mean, uh, you know, it's nice to be listened to and it's nice to be agreed with, but it's not nice to be part of this freaking monster that I'm freaking against. So I even taken it to the point of, well, I'll avoid using them, even if it's going to help me. Fuck them. I, I, I don't need the help to do anything. Now, their help has always got a, a bigger debt at the end of it than it's worth paying. So, no. You guys do it. I ain't gonna. Nah, 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 boo boo. Back to my story. Okay, where were we? Facebook, Amazon, Google call for government surveillance reform. It first gained attention after the revelations of NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden in 2013. Congress is in the process of weighing reforms for the pro program. It must vote to renew Section 702 before the end of the year, otherwise it will expire. The, lay the letter addressed to the Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee uh, asked Congress to consider several reforms to the program to ensure greater transparency and privacy protections. Well, there you go with your begging. If you're going to beg for it now, then you are better be willing to take the answer. No. You know, why? <laughs> wow. How do people get themselves in a position with somebody or something in life that when it doesn't go their way, that that thing is still in control of them and they need to ask it to f fix itself? Well, I don't think so. You know, if you got a... a a partner that treats you in a, in a way you're not pleased with, and you didn't see that coming from the very first, you know, moment. Well, then that's your problem, not their problem. You were told, you just didn't look. You know, uh, uh, what do we have? We, you know, people see what they want to see, and they, they look at things how they they're familiar with them. And seeing something new or different or in a different light is not as simple as it sounds. Cirque tries to do it to me all the time. Well, look at it from this lovey-dovey, pooky-hooky side. And I go, well, yeah, but I don't got a lovey-dovey, hooky-pooky side. What do I do now? <laughs> and, but, and I guess that's you know the bottom line of it is... I could pretend, oh yeah, honey, I know exactly what you're talking about, sure, and you know, try to score that, you know, lovey-dovey stuff by lying. But I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's right to treat people that way. And they'll call me stupid. Oh, you just playing like you don't understand. Well, no, there's there's like fractional reserve banking. I understand the principle behind that. What I don't understand is why people will do it. We did it with the house. Okay, well, there you go. I don't understand what made Cirque do it, but she knows how to do this stuff, so she did it. Me, I would never do it. Not, not in my lifetime, but uh, that's the way I roll. Too much for the radio in a few minutes. Anyway, let's go back to Amazon's helping police build a surveillance network with ring doorbells. Police departments across the country... From major cities like Houston to towns with fewer than 30,000 people have offered free or discounted ring doorbells to citizens, sometimes using taxpayer funds to pay for Amazon's products. While ring owners are supposed to have a choice on providing police footage in some giveaways, police require recipients to turn over footage when requested. The sheer number of cameras run by Amazon's Ring business raises questions about privacy involving both law enforcement and tech giants. Critics have pointed out that retail giants' other ventures with law enforcement, like offering facial recognition tools. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they, you know what they're going to do like with this moon shit? They're going to sell you this crap now when it's in its infancy, just like they did with the internet, with the moon units and all that shit. And they're still working on crap. And well, they're working on it. They put out a, a functioning uh, prototype, I guess you could call it. And with the internet, they had the luxury of, hey, if something fucks up, we can shut it down for a couple hours and go in there and fix it. Well, they don't have that kind of luxury with the stuff they're talking about. But they have enough success that you can be pointed at to look at to believe that this is true, too. <laughs> 
So, like fingerprints. Oh, no, no. Fingerprints ain't proof. No, 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 no. Fingerprints are similar sometimes. But not, not to the point of an exact identification. To me, no. Things... Th the system tells us what it wants us to know. So we'll go along blindly with crap so that people can be put in jail for things they didn't do. Because there's a, always a lot more reasons why somebody's fingerprints could be somewhere than uh, you're allowed to explain and try in a court of law. Ask Vinny about that sometime. You know, you get your chance, but you only get to say what you're allowed to say. And that's court. No, that's a whole nother argument, too. But um, I was running off on the mouth about something crazy. More than 50 local... Oh, I already read that part. Suburban doorsteps. What we have here is a perfect marriage between law enforcement and one of the biggest companies creating conditions for society that few people would want to be a part of, said Mohammed Tajzar, staff attorney at the ACLU of Southern California. Yeah, Bar Association and their fucking band of thieves. That's the outside of your home. Here's the in. The government just admitted it will use smart home devices for spying. If you want evidence that the that U.S. intelligence agencies aren't losing surveillance abilities because of the rise in use of encryption by tech companies, look no further than the testimony by the then Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper. Clapper made clear that the Internet of Things, the many devices like thermostats, cameras, and other appliances that are increasingly connected to the Internet, are providing ample opportunity for intelligent, a, intelligence agencies to spy on targets, and possibly the masses. And it's a danger that many consumers who buy these products may be wholly unaware of. Well, yeah, people. Ha. Privacy advocates have known about the potential for government to exploit the Internet of Things for years. Law enforcement agencies have taken notice too, increasingly serving court orders on companies for data they keep that citizens might not even know they are transmitting. Police have already been asking Google-owned company Dropcam for footage from cameras inside people's homes meant to keep an eye on their kids. Orwell got the tech right, just not big government's ability to create a totalitarian ends. Freedom is allowed for the free markets. That allowed the rise of the private sector. Big tech Orwell thought big government would produce. And now big tech and big government are partnering to end that freedom. Well, for we plebeians anyway, I'm sure big tech and big government will be just fine. Yeah, you know, there's a whole lot of support for big government on the reallibertymedia.com chat, folks. Let me tell you, I think we've got one Trump supporter and um, uh, two Democrats. Or I don't know. I'm guessing because the two, I think, are Democrats. They don't care for Trump. And the one Trump lover, well, he's always got something hot to say about the Democrats, like, there's any different <laughs> you know all this crap about republican and democrat it's it, it's really i hate to tell you guys this but to me it, it's uh divide and conquer and you're that's what i mean instead of being joined up together we're we're all divided and when you're divided you can't how do you stand what are you going to stand for i make it clear I live out here in Bumblefuck, Denmark, with my little wife and this little house and the little pets and shit. And I don't have any interest in going anywhere to cause anybody any problems. But being American, I could. I could start a revolution and, you know, change the world and all that horse shit. Or I could just stay home with my wife and have a nice, peaceful time and, you know, yabber about what I think about shit on the radio a couple times a week. I don't think that's a 
bad trade-off. But uh, hmm. I don't think there's enough people doing radio. People have a lot of opinions. Clear about that. I have a ton of opinions. But, you know, just because I think something doesn't mean it's true. It means it's true to me. See, that's the part I don't think we're uh, educated properly about how to communicate that concept. I believe that doesn't mean you have to believe that. Me and Cirque don't believe a lot of things uh, on the same level. I mean, I can get her to roll her eyes with three or four different sentences. And sometimes I think I'm playing around and sometimes I think I'm serious, but I don't really care. It's just uh, world shit outside of the freaking reality that I'm in. I can't. Things that are in my reality are things that I can physically do something about. I can turn the light switch on and off, you know. I can sit in the dark if I want to. Turn on a candle. Uh, I can turn the TV set off and read a book. Uh, I can put the book down and go out and start a fire. I can do whatever I want to freaking do. And uh, what I found in the States was you needed permission, you know, because there's so many regulations and everything was a danger. Can't start a fire because you know you're you this could happen and that could happen. You can't have a barbecue because this could happen and that could happen. You need a license to uh, everything has got to be regulated and licensed and safety and who fire alarms being tested here at my buddy's apartment complex. Just about cursed out the fireman, says Don Van Meter. Hmm. Yelling out in the hall. What the fuck is that damn noise? It's fucking annoying. It's freaking the cat out. <laughs> Good for you, Van Meter. Go off on somebody. You know, get that. Let that inner demon out. Play with the firemen. They're trained for that shit. They must. And besides, come on. How, I don't think you're any louder than a fire alarm. And if you are, whoa. <laughs> I take that all back. Anyway, I ran out of links. That was that was all the links I'm going to do for the show tonight. Hmm. But uh, I keep hearing this uh, that argument about when the power goes out. I think I think Goober Goober was using it on me yesterday or this morning or yesterday morning, one or the other. I think it was yesterday. You know, I'm just uh, this and I'm a that and. All these bigger things that are so important that to me don't mean a front, nothing, mean nothing. The power goes out. What the fuck am I going to do if the power goes out? Make it go back on? How? No, just like everybody else. All I can do is either complain to somebody on the phone or wait until the power goes back on. And you got to remember, if their power goes out, well, there you go. You know, they can't function without us. So if their power's on and ours is off, they need us just as much as we need them. You know, it's just we're, we're these little specks in this big blob. And to make up the big blob, you need a lot of specks. And the specks don't want to hang together. All the specks want to be off. Hey, look, there's some square specks. I want to be with the square specks. Hey, look, there's some lispy club-footed specs, so I'm going to go join their spec group. And before you know it, all the people that could make this big movement of, you know, voice to bring on some kind of change, what they're doing <laughs> is exactly what the internet and the television and the politicians and the churches all told them to do. There's not an original fucking thought out there. People are just... I don't know. The only ones I think are still thinking are the ones that are holding a beer or a spliff down at the train station. And the rest of us? Nah. <laughs> we can't. If we if we went against the system, well, the system would kick the shit out of us right now. That's what would happen. So all we can really do is, you know, complain about the reality of why it's fucked up. Because hmm. all the players doesn't matter who's in the White House. It doesn't matter who's in Congress or the Senate or the House of Representatives. None of that shit matters. It's all, it's all been uh, a big performance for a lot of years. 
And the way I come to that decision is by looking at the estate that the world is, you know, reported to me about. How many fucking wars are going on right now for uh, <laughs> terrorism? You know, who in the fuck attacks America beside America and Israel? Nobody. But it sure sounds good. You know, oh, we got attacked. They took down the Twin Towers. How? Oh, uh, uh, we're not sure. Uh, no, they uh, hijacked some planes and they flew them into it. And uh, there you go. But the coincidence of the places that got taken down and when they were taken down, what was coming up if they weren't taken down the very next day would uh, cause some real huge problems. So it was easier to fake uh, an international terrorist attack than for the government to be accountable for a missing $2.3 trillion dollars. Now, they played that game for about seven more years before the banks couldn't keep up, prop it up anymore, and then it collapsed. And then the people had their fucking moment, 2008. All these great voters, yeah. People could have united and said, no, I don't fucking think so, Mr. Jew Banker. Why don't you take your freaking hook nose, pack up your shit, and kick yourself down the road. But, uh, <laughs> We're convinced that uh, starting fresh from nothing is not how it's done. Well, I'm here to tell you, people, that uh, sometimes when you give up everything that you have and take a step up into another direction and go somewhere else, things work out fine for you. Now, maybe you're looking at it from one of these refugee people. You know, this stuff that you read about. The stuff that you never you never see it with your own eyes, but you read about it. Because I run into, uh, what do you call them? Uh, Islamics or whatever downtown. The uh, Talhead people. <coughs> they don't bother me. I don't bother them. Everybody's cool. There ain't no mosque in this town. There's a church that hardly anybody uses, and it's probably one of the biggest buildings in, in the area. It's huge, tall. Uh, I've put some pictures on reallibertyorg Think about that. Uh, some of my little places I go visit in town. Uh, and <laughs> so I don't see any external uh, shifting here socially. I just see a lot of white people and occasionally, hey, look, there's a chocolate drop. What the fuck? And it's just out of pocket to see dark people in such a white place. But they don't bother me. I don't bother them. It's that kind of a, I guess the Jew in me is still a little Arab shy. But when I talk to them, we're always, it, it's always easier to do than it is to consider. Um, like the guy at the train station. when I didn't even know he'd bought the, state, the place from uh, Muhammad for a long time. Because I wasn't nosy. I just thought he took the job. And the the guy that owned the place before was he was living out in Copenhagen, so I figured out oh, he hired you to so you didn't have to come out here and just work you. But that wasn't the case. <laughs> so w what I found out was, gee, talking to people, asking them questions or something you don't know, say, hey, I don't know this. You might look like a dick not knowing something for a second or two, but hey. If it's a whole lot better for me to ask something I don't know than it is to pretend I know something I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that, you know, that's just me and my crazy uh, little Danish life that I got going on out here. And like I was saying about the neighbors, the Pol Polish kids that were doing the construction, that that went real deep. I mean, just a bunch of sloppy guys living in a in a big house. Nobody was taking care of anything. And they're all working, you know, drinking and working and sending money home. So uh, I guess they were undercutting the uh, the Danes' work. And uh, when the neighbors got wind of that, and he decided that wasn't going to fly. And then the and the uh, infestation thing bothered another neighbor, neighbor. They had some rats or something. I never saw any of this, and I'm only across the street, like, I don't know, 100 yards or so. 50, 70, I don't know. 50, 70 yards, something like that. And I never saw a rat, but apparently 
when the people in this neighborhood get together and decide that what you're doing is not good for everybody else and they can prove what you're doing well if that's the case then you pay the price so it's not like they were just making up shit you know and calling a some some uh, anonymous hotline hey i know this guy here and uh, yeah, yeah blah 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 no these people were specific and they faced off with the, the kids and they did it all you know in a civilized way sadly but you know when you're asked see that's what went back to the chloe thing because when people ask you or threaten you if you don't stop that you know we're gonna have to kick your fucking ass out of here when it comes to that that's the part where you back down and go okay you don't say oh yeah why don't you try that because <laughs> you know hey there's kate now miss kate's got the got the kicker you know if she wants to boot me i thought i i'm not one to worry about stuff like that but if I was ever told, hey, you know, we're going to boot you if you don't stop picking on Hansel, I don't know if I'd stop picking on Hansel, but I'd pay attention to the threat. <laughs> but, but I'd probably take the boot because the guy's just too much. I, I can't resist. It's like an addiction. But, you know, being civil with the majority of a, of a group as a mainstay to participate, I don't think that's like extortion. I think that's decency. You know? And I believe people get what they give. I, I believe I get back in life what I've given in life. That's why life is so good. Because I've really, overall, you know, the shitty little things I did didn't amount to much. Or I wouldn't have a good, comfortable, you know, life in a place where I'm happy. And I think that I've always had a good, comfortable life in a place I, I was happy. Um... I've never really been one to snivel. Oh, I hate it here. Blah, 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 blah. No, I just, uh, hmm, how would I explain that? Well, I guess when I get tired of something, I just go, well, it's time to go. And that could take anywhere from 10 minutes to a year. <laughs> now, right now, it's been five years and change, and I still like where I'm at, and I still like who I'm with. So, ah. What do you say? How do you knock? Um, <laughs> see, the government here is not my friend. I know that. As far from the EU as they can be and all this bullshit, they still got sucked into that crap trade union. It was never a trade union. But, the, you know, the corruption and control at that time in the 70s, who knows? Those people are all probably all dead now. And uh, <laughs> whatever's left... <clears throat> running this EU crap because it got amended and changed. They took powers over the years through le in legal ways that according to the legal people, they can't be reversed. Well, wait a minute. Uh, you know, you can amend a constitution, you can wipe out a constitution, but this EU thing, that that's etched in stone for some reason. It's irreversible. <laughs> hmm. Or is that just the uh, the collective stupidity of millions of people when they're they're asked the same question? Should never do that. If you ask people, ask them in small groups. Smaller the better. Five. <laughs> ask five people what they think about any one thing, and I'll almost guarantee you that you're going to get five different answers back. So, what do you think happens? when you ask people what they want politically, right? And then after they tell you, you go, well, you can pick Hill Dog or Trump. What? That's it? Because, <laughs> you know, when they start out, they've got the, the independent party. <laughs> uh, who was that guy? Uh, Ron Paul. Uh, now, Ron Paul's uh, been in politics for, what, 25, 30 years now? Well, he came in, it was fucked up, and when he leaves it, it's going to be more fucked up. So, I don't see how having been in that in that game for all those years really could make him uh, a positive choice as leadership. Because <laughs> the crap that we're following is not what we're told. <laughs> 
we're encouraged to do the most insane chemotherapy ring a bell with anybody inoculations uh I get trashed by people still because, oh, you're one of those lunatic anti-vaxxers. Yeah, well, I don't want a bull sticking his dick up my ass either. So what, you know, what joke are you going to make about that? I don't want foreign bodies, you know, injected into my body, putting who knows fucking what into it. And I think it was uh, Grim wrote earlier, he said it, or there was a link on mine. Somebody posted it, reposted it. If you broke down the ingredients in an inoculation and spoon fed them to your child and got caught, you'd go to prison for poisoning the kid. But the state, why the state can put it all in one big whopping cocktail, put it in a needle and inject it into your kid's body. And if you say boo... They go and take the kid away from you. Probably put you in jail too. I don't know what they got. They got something cooking in California for uh, mandatory uh, inoculations. And now they got the internet to you know keep track of everything. Oh, have you been inoculated up to date? Do you have all your shots? Blah, 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 blah. When all the evidence in the world about how much damage this shit does is right here, right in front of us. But you have a lot of people, you know, that write stories that are misleading, misrepresentations. The uh, the information isn't really true. They haven't tested any of this shit. It doesn't make sense to test any of this shit. If you said, hey, we want 1,000 children to test these poisons. Parents, bring your kids to. Nobody's going to show up. I mean, who's that insane? Now, if you say free self minutes or something, I can almost see that. But uh, inoculations to get, you know, goose come put in your body so that you don't get sick. I don't know. Just the, the spin of the whole thing to, uh, to me. Because it sounds so modern. And they played the fuck out of that uh, inoculation virus in movies. Good Lord. After I started to really notice about the inoculations being what they truly are, it's a couple years ago, listen to Clint Richardson. I went, whoa, holy shit, I'm a good thing I stayed away from the, those needles and stuff. Oh, no, it was just the timing of it. I was like, just before, I'm old enough to where nothing was mandatory when I was growing up. And my parents had more sense uh, than I did. Because I was a child. And they'd gone through the shit that they were trying to put me through. And my mom said, nope, you're not going to shoot up the kids with nothing. So, we never got inoculations for uh, whatever the fuck we were you know, expected to. And I remember my mom had a scar on her shoulder from an inoculation. And she was pretty blatant about, yep, that's I got that from getting a shot when I was a kid. And she was not happy about it. didn't discuss it with us, but that was as far as the conversation went. And then when it was time for, uh, you know, oh, get your kids shot up at school. No, not you. You're not going. And here I am, all these fucking years later, going to be 60 damn years old. And, uh, you know, I get pushed around by uh, verbally by people on Internet site. But in real life, no. I think in real life, uh, people tend to just mind their business. You know, on the internet, we're a little bit more free. We bring up all these outrageous topics, you know. So you kind of open the door to get slapped in your face a couple times. Not to go back to the Chloe thing. I'm just saying, you know, when you when you bring up aliens and spaceships and uh Hey, Vinny, I'll catch up with you. I'll see you tomorrow. You, I'll, I'll listen to your show tomorrow night when you're uh, when we get back from the store. And, uh... <laughs> Grim. <laughs> uh, don't, his donut story confirms it. That's what Frumpy says. Yeah, he's an ingrate, Grimmer. Watch out. Those donuts will give you away every time. So, anyway... Sitting here at the end of 20% off 
and I did my big thing on fractional reserve banking because I'm always spewing about it. You know, I, I know I use it as a reference quite a bit. And I feel personally that if you understand how that's done, then you see that nothing has a value. It goes beyond Bitcoin and currency and it, this grand illusion of trading and Internet and big ships moving large, pro, you know, large amounts of products halfway across, across the globe and all the things it entails. And, and it can all be disrupted by one country, Israel. Israel can fuck us in a heartbeat anytime it wants to, and it does. And no matter what it does to the United States, the U.S. never files charges against them for whatever crimes they commit. They're just free to do whatever the fuck they please. So, if the Jews win, I sure want to be a Jew on that day. But, reality dictates to me that, you know, if a lie, no matter how many thousands of years you can get away with a story like the one they're telling, this religion stuff, no matter how far they take this down the road, there are going to be um, people that think differently, you know, that don't buy the word of God written in the, by man bullshit. It's, it's nice. It was great. It worked to control people. It's still working to control people. There is a guy sitting on a golden fucking throne in the Vatican on the backs of poor people telling them to be, you know, blessed and all this other shit when they don't have anything to feel good or be blessed about. But, <laughs> oh, besides, oh, can we diddle the little children's? Huh? 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 Hmm. Anyway, so I'm sitting at the end of, you know, like 59 looking at, wow, d uh, are there other people out there in the world that are just too afraid, you know, to call this what it is? Uh, am I, or am I seeing it from a particular light that's so special that you have to stand over here and face that direction and this time of day to see it? Or, see, I don't think it's that. I think it's just a matter of willingness to look at whatever's in front of you and my thing is uh, some things just uh, automatically don't make sense they just seem strange and then there's always an explanation oh gravity oh the world's spinning at so much miles an hour and everybody's spinning through space and but here we are right and uh, they're telling me that they can't financially support uh, all the people in the United States because, you know, there's not enough money to do that and all the rich people got all the money, so the poor people <laughs> and, and, they con, and they con the middle class into believing it's true by juggling the numbers and making up shit and telling stories and attacking their self and blaming it on some wannabe enemy. Hmm. Anyway, where are we at here? What's Frumpy going on about? Well, Frumpy says, well, I'm, when I'm outside for the day, I have a big ghetto blaster. Actually, a Sony mini system I made into one piece. It's so big, I had to use one of those handicapped towel bars for a handle. <laughs> but if it rains, I'm fucked. <laughs> okay, that... that that sounds like something you do, you wackadoodle. Taking out his uh, musical entertainment. Anyway, I guess I'll just call this uh, uh, the end of 20% off tonight. Being as I thought my second uh, link was going to run me a lot longer than it did. I, I actually got through it a lot faster. But, <laughs> hope I made a point. I had fun doing it tonight. And uh, what do we got? We got tomorrow. You, oh, Vinny bugged out. But Vinny's going to do uh, a Ponder Gander tomorrow, I believe. Maybe a different name. But that should be uh, 1 o'clock. Am I right, Grimner? Tell me yes or no if you catch the the boo-boo. Let me uh, correct it here. I always say that and never correct it. But 1 o'clock on the East Coast for a Ponder Gander with your host, Vincent Easley. And then at 7 o'clock on Friday and Wednesday, you got Graham Z does the Rocket Chair podcast. 
7 o'clock on the East Coast. And, oh, last, yeah, I listened to your show today. And, yeah, carbon-based life forms or not, Mary, I don't I don't know. We, we can't be both, but this freaking global warming crowd doesn't understand what a carbon-based life form is. So you got a lot of people running around uh, regurgitating this bullshit science that's crap. And they're just not aware that they don't know what they're fucking talking about. It's very upsetting. Anyway, Friday, 11 o'clock on the East Coast. Grim there and Moose Girl. I don't know if she's in town this week. I heard him saying she might be festivaling or she said, I don't know. If he doesn't have Moose Girl, he does balls to the wall at 11 o'clock on the East Coast Friday night. Then Saturday, I'll be back with a dork table at noon on Saturday, East Coast. Sunday morning, Grimner comes in with the blues, plays some trivia till about 3 o'clock. And then Hal Anthony, 3 o'clock on the West Coast, comes out from behind the woodshed with a can of whoop-ass for the crickets. Then Monday night, we got Grimner at 7 o'clock on the East Coast doing Grim Leftovers. Those are the links that he didn't manage to find time to do on the Friday night show with Breaker's Ball or Balls to the Wall. And then Tuesday, 2, uh, 2 a.m., I guess that would be Tuesday morning, 2 a.m., I do, which is 8 o'clock my time here in Denmark, in a perfect world without Vinny. Now, Vinny's threatened to come on the show, but I do it so late and <laughs> His time, I don't think he's awake for the. <laughs> I don't think he's up for the radio. And then Wednesday, Graham Z comes back with the rocket chair out uh, seven o'clock on the West Coast. Uh, and then Thursday, two o'clock in the PM, six eight o'clock Denmark time. I'll be back with twenty percent off. Anyway, thanks a lot. I had a lot of fun reading about the. Uh, fractional reserve and what else did I do see how your big government watching you and following you and that little bit of information about the passport uh, they changed the laws so that if you're flying domestically in the United States you can no longer do it with a, a state ID you need a special ID card or a passport <laughs> so we'll catch you guys uh, next time on 20% off.